Hi there, welcome to this build of a 65 inch wingspan Great Plains Trainer 60. We've now got all of the construction, the balsa construction of the main airframe completed and we're ready to start thinking about putting in the, servo, uh, the servos, the radio, uh, the radio, the battery, but rather than just dive in and put those where it's convenient, where access is the easiest, we want to think about the best place to put those to get, get the correct CG at the end of this build as specified on the plans. We could, if we just put everything where it's convenient in the middle below the wings, we might find we've got a, a nose heavy plane or a tail heavy plane and then end up having to add weight to counter that to get this correct CG. Now the last thing we want to do as aeroplane builders, model makers, is to add unnecessary weight. We want to keep this as light as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to mock this up now with everything that can't be moved. So for example, the rudder has to go here, we can't put it anywhere else. Same with the elevators. We've already decided the location, the engine, the fuel tank, the servos in the wings. So we're gonna put all of that together and we're gonna see where the CG of the plane at that point naturally falls. And if we find we've got a plane that's a little bit tail heavy, then we can make provision to put the battery quite a way forward. And if you've seen in the previous videos, we can put that battery right up into the, almost touching the firewall if necessary. If we find that the plane is nose heavy, then we can try and work on putting this battery back here, so, well, maybe not that far back, but back here, where it will have, be behind the CG and have a big impact and hopefully balance that out. Same with the servos, we can put the servos probably about that far forward, so on the CG, or we can move them quite a way back behind the CG. So it's really important we think about this critically to get that right CG right without any added weight at the end of the build. But first, I've got to make some landing gear. I've got some aluminium and I just need to make the uh, landing gear for the centre of the plane, for the two wheels. And I'm going to do that now and I'll show you how I'm going to do that and then we'll have a look at mocking it up. So I initially measured up and drew out what I needed on a piece of paper and then transferred that to a piece of 3mm aluminium. And you can see I've cut it out partially here with my uh, jigsaw with a metal blade. And uh, once I've got that cut out, I've filed it up. I've put a slight chamfer here on the leading edge just to thin that profile down a little bit. And I've got my 4mm holes either end to take the wheels and now I need to bend this into shape. Once I've bent this into shape, I'm going to put it under the tap with some 400 grit wet and dry, and this will clean up this lovely. It will take out all those file marks and put a lovely brushed uh, appearance on it. Now, as far as the wheels are concerned, these have got a, a 4 mil machine screw holding these. And I've chosen a machine screw which has got a portion of uh, a plane shaft. And that plane shaft is just slightly longer than the width of the wheels. So the wheels are running on that plane shaft rather than running on the thread. And I've just spaced it with a couple of washers so I can tighten that nut up as tight as I can to lock it onto the end of the thread and it still gives me the right spacing for that to spin nicely. Now that can be put through there. I can space it a little bit if I want so it's not quite, quite as close to the landing gear. And I can put on either a nylon nut on there or I might even put on a, a domed nut and a, a lock washer and a bit of Loctite just to, uh, to make it look a little bit neater. Because of course I can trim this thread down to, to what I need to the right length. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bend this up 
and get it cleaned up and we'll have a quick look at it when it's done. Right, well I've got the basic landing gear finished for now. And I say for now because I'm probably going to give it another a bit of finishing just to uh, just to make it look a little bit better I mean it's it's got most of the uh, the marks out and, and that brushed kind of finish but as I say I may finish it a little bit more uh, the other thing is that the aluminium I could get for this is fairly soft it's not structural hard aluminium which it should be so once it's on the plane I'll see how much flex and I may end up putting just a couple of bracing wires which um, I've done before when I couldn't get good quality aluminium and it made a huge difference, really added a lot of strength. But we'll see when we've got it all fitted out. Right, we now have our landing gear, so we're ready to start mocking this up. And I'll just say, I think this exercise, particularly when you're building from plans, is absolutely critical to get that CG right with a minimum of additional weight. What I would say is it is a rough estimate because you still haven't got the covering on, there'll be the odd washer and nut and bolt, but it does give us a really good idea of where to put stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mock this up and we'll come back and see where that CG is naturally fall falling. And I am really, really intrigued to see how this works out because I kind of feel it's going to be nose heavy, but honestly, I have no idea it could end up being tail heavy. So it's really exciting to see how this works out. Right, well I've now got this all mocked up and everything that we can't move is installed on the plane. And I've even put on the balsa that I'm going to be using to do the underside of the fuselage tail. And there's a little bit here and there just to account for that additional weight. I've got a couple of snakes which I've just laid on here. They're a little bit too long but they do so they will need to be trimmed and the weight will be lost but they are adding just a little bit to that tail section to try and make it as realistic as possible. I've got the wing servos in the position that they're going to be. The only thing I haven't got is the control horns and there'll be a few two mil nuts and bolts and washers that will go that will accompany those and some control rods so that will all be behind the uh, CG. So now if we have a look and see where the CG is naturally falling it's a little bit nose heavy so where are we yeah yeah that's too, too heavy on the nose there. Probably fly okay, but that's not how I want to balance it. Now the things we've got to play with are primarily the three servos, rudder, elevator and throttle. I may end up putting a slightly smaller servo in for throttle just to save some weight, and the battery. Now if we put these at the back here, at the back of the, which will essentially be the back of the compartment below the wings, so access is okay. And we put the battery there as well. And we try that now. That seems to balance out pretty good. I mean, this is just on my fingertips. And that seems to be quite nicely balanced, actually. So. And as I said, there is still a little bit of weight to go behind the CG for those few nuts and bolts. It's not going to be a lot, I know, but down at the tail it will make a little bit of difference. So I'm really pleased with that now because I've got a really good idea of where I need to put these servos and the battery. I mean, the battery I'll put as far back as possible, but I'll leave space underneath the servos so that I can slide it further forward. Maybe I'll put a lighter engine in and I want to move it uh, a little bit further forward, but it will give me that fine control. One of the engines I've got to put in it is a little bit heavier than this, 
So I will put everything as far back as possible. And like I say, I can use the battery coming forward as that fine control. So, I, so I'm really pleased with that. And I think this has been a really good uh, exercise to do. Well, before I start to take this apart again and fit the servos, there's just one last thing I couldn't help myself doing, and that is weighing it. I was really intrigued as to what kind of weight I was going to end up with with this plane. And I'll tell you why. When we look at the plans, it gives quite a big range, and the top range is quite, to my mind, is quite heavy for this size of plane. And what they're saying is six and a half to eight pounds. That seems quite a lot of playing to me. Uh, and in, in, period, in metric, that's uh, 2.94 to 3.62 kilos. Again, if you're working metric, that's still quite a lot of weight. Now, I know we're still going to add weight to this. We've still got the covering to do. We've still got the fuel proofing to do in the engine and uh, fuel tank bay. We've got all the little nuts and bolts. When we fit the servos, we're going to add some timber. But it's not going to be a huge amount. So anyway, what weight did I get for this? At the moment, it's coming in at... Where's my piece of paper? Let me just check so I get this right. It's coming in at 2.5 kilos. So that is more than 400 grams or a pound below the minimum weight specified here. Which is quite interesting really, because you know this, is, this isn't a bad range at the bottom, but if I can get it below the minimum weight, that will be great. Because the lighter the plane is, the, um, the better it will fly, I think, the nicer it will fly. I mean, don't get me wrong, this will, this will take the weight, you know, it's got a big wing on it, it's a good designed plane. But the lighter we can make it, I think, the better. Now, I have been careful in selecting the timber for this. There's very little heavy balsa on it, only where it's needed, like the wing spars. A lot of it is kind of soft or medium. But uh, it's really heartening to see the, um, uh, what weight this comes in at. Anyway, I'm going to draw this video to a close now. And... In the next video, I'm going to be starting to uh, fit the servos and get this all ready to start covering. And I guess I'm going to have to start doing the fuel proofing in the next video as well, because it's about time uh, that that was done. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you've seen the benefit of mocking up like this and getting an idea of where that CG is, so we can actually put those servos in the most sensible places to arrive at the correct CG without that added weight. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. And please come back and see how we get on in the next video building this great planes trainer 16.